Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the worst banning for players ever in Magic. So there was a time where pretty much they banned not one, not two. They just banned pretty much any card that was very strong. And that was during the Urza block. So Urza block, I remember this block very well. GameStop, I purchased most of my booster packs from GameStop. I was in elementary school and Pokemon just came, Pokemon TCG just came out, first edition packs. So you had the choice between first edition packs of Pokemon at GameStop or Urza Saga. I obviously bought both, but you know, on the income of an elementary school student, you don't really have that much money. I kind of wish I was a teenager or something with more money and wiser because I would have purchased way more of each one of those. So I remember this very well. And then the Wizard of the Coast store opened near the JC Penny Mall. And that was very that was during very close to the same time that Urza Saga and the banning happened. So let's talk about why this banning was so crazy. This was called the Combo Winter. And you would kill your opponent in standard on turn three or less. And you would mulligan your hand until you got the perfect deck and you would win. This sounds kind of insane now where the cards in standard are incredibly weak. But this was how powerful Ur Urza Saga was. And that's why the next set, McKady Mask, and the future sets were much, much weaker because they didn't want this to happen. Uh, Jackal Pup, I remember that card. It was my favorite card. It was the first card I really wanted to build a collection of because of the artwork only. But in December 1998, they banned Tolarian Academy and Windfall. So Tolarian Academy was very, very strong, and so was Windfall. And when you had Lotus Petal, Mox Diamond, Grim Monolith, you could just go crazy. You have access to six mana in turn one. Windfall was draw seven cards because, again, your opponent would not be able to interact. So turn one, your opponent discards seven cards and draws seven cards. You discard zero cards because you played your hand and draw seven more cards due to Windfall. And they ban these two cards. So it's very important for you to understand this part because what happens next is quite amazing. So they hit Tolarian Academy and Windfall because it was too good in December 1998. A few months later, they hit Dream Halls, Earthcraft, Fluctuator, Lotus Petal, Recurring Nightmare, and Time Spiral. So they hit two cards in December, they hit six more in the beginning of March, and they hit Memory Jar later. All you're talking about a massive amount of different decks. I mean, yeah, it's the same deck, but there's different ways to do it, to play. You're talking about two cards in December and seven cards in March. Nine cards total, three different times. Wow. Wow. And not that only did Magic survive, it became more popular because of this. And you know why? Like, here's a crazy part. Here is the crazy part about Combo Winter and how aggressive it was. And the fact that uh, Urza Saga block had more cards banned from tournament play than any other block over the course of the block's history. 16 different cards have at one point been banned in at least one DCI sanctioned format nine of which debuted in Urza Saga. So Urza Saga itself, Stroke of Genius, Time Spiral, Windfall, Yagamir's Will, Goblin Lackey, Votatic Key, Gare's Credo, Sarah's Sanctum, Tolarian Academy. Because we had good cards. These are cards that we still play with in EDH. We still play with Lane Legacy that we still love because they were good cards. The problem with standard and the bannings 
is they're not good cards. They're energy cards that outside of standard cannot be played anywhere. I mean, is anyone really making an energy EDH deck right now? Is anyone really making a modern energy deck? Is that going to be tier 1, tier 2? The problem is the cards being banned today in a vacuum are some of the weakest cards I've ever seen. I grew up in elementary school playing Urza Saga. No one can disagree with the bannings because you're like, these cards are ridiculous, right? Today, I look at the bannings. I look at Emiko. My gosh, Emiko supposed to be good. She's supposed to be the villain. She's supposed to make you feel despair when your opponent plays it. Why ban her? I look at Smuggler's Copter. This Smuggler's Copter is actually just a better version of that Sky Cliff or whatever that is. And it's good. But does it need to be banned? Artifacts uh, artifacts tend to be very powerful because they can be played in multiple decks. I personally don't think Smuggler's Copter was good enough to be banned, in my opinion. There's ways to... A braid would have been a very, very easy way to deal with it. You can print cards to deal with. The problem, in my opinion, is these cards are getting banned. These energy cards are tuned with Afer and stuff. I look at them and I say to myself, wow, these are terrible cards. And they're only meant to be played in standard. I can get... If you want to ban cards that are super strong, then ban cards that are super strong. But, but, come understand that there was a time and there was a place where bannings were like, they were embraced. They were like, yeah, great, we got bannings. Uh, great, good news, everybody. So Urza's Legacy, Urza's Saga, I mean, these were some of the best set in Magic history. The issue, in my opinion, is the why standard is so bad right now and why people are not playing it. The car power level of these sets are incredibly weak. Hour of Devastation, a lot of you told me this was going to be a really good set. I look at the price point and I say to myself, huh, Scarab God is eventually going to be less than $20. What else is in this entire set? Nada. Nothing. And when I look at these new sets like Rivals of Ixlon and Ixlon, no good. They are no good. Obviously, I grew up in a very different time period than most of you grew up with, but I even then I knew that this was a very fun time to play Magic. You got to do very powerful stuff. You got to play some of the strongest cards in Magic's history. Urza Saga, what if, if they reprinted Urza Saga and they named it Iconic Masters, you would sell a hundred times more. A hundred times more. That's the Iconic Masters, in my opinion. That's the 25th anniversary. What a time to play. And I, re I feel like really, like that's why I think they should reprint old boxes to give people who de didn't have the opportunity to play these sets because it was amazing. I remember drafting and everyone drafted black. You had eight people sitting on the table and everyone's drafting black because you know the best spell is in black. It was uh, Pestilence. That was amazing. You got Pestilence, Doraz. Doraz was also very good. Uh, you had Contamination at Rare, which is OP. And it was just so fun. It was the most fun set I've ever played. And even when the bannings happened, people just said, yeah, okay, I guess, I, yeah, it was good, but we enjoyed it while it lasted. Today, when a banning happens, it just means you have to buy a new deck. Back when they banned Memory Jar, you could send your Memory Jar to them and they would send you a new pack. That makes sense to me. I don't know why they stopped doing that. I mean, imagine even the comments and stuff. I mean, maybe you don't send out a pack. Maybe you had to collect like 10 tuned to Afers or something like common. But at the same, or, you know, you had to collect five um, that made. I already forgot his name. He, he got banned and he really didn't need to get banned because the deck that wanted him, Coco, was rotated out before he was. Anyway, my point is, some of the stuff that we have today is very weak. And I'm not sure why that is the case, given the fact that it doesn't need to be the case. 
Um, it doesn't need to be this week. Um, it could be, they could print very, very strong standard sets and just be like, all right, deal with it. And modern and, you know, shake up modern, shake up legacy, do stuff that makes your players really want to continue to play the game because they're looking at unique cards. And to do that, you have to do power level. I grew up in a time where magic was so fun. It was, I'm, yeah, I was younger and probably have a different view than I would have today. But I'm much more cynical and pessimistic as to where magic is going. Back then, it was just fun, creative designs, and just very unique power. You knew those cards would have value 20 years from now. You knew it. You played them. You're not an idiot. You know the cards that you're playing with today, these pirates and dinosaurs and stuff, they're going to be outclassed in the next set. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.